Payush for accepting this invite. So he is presently a management consultant at KPMG India. He brings with him diverse experience in education, health tech, and heavy machinery. Most recently, handling the key accounts at Schindler India. Glad to inform that he was a founding president of the Cotton India Consulting Club, for which many of us aspire to be part of. And he won various national level case competitions at I am Bangalore, Calcutta, and Indore. Convener and the head of organizing committee of Exilize flagship uh, operations and supply chain conclave, which was held in January 2021. He also assisted Mr. Mark Constantino in research for his upcoming edition of his bestseller Case in Point. A wit writer with articles published in B School magazines of I am Calcutta, Rotak, and Udep. Oh God, I feel so overwhelming, Ayush, when I talk about your accomplished during, uh, accomplishments during your time at Exilari. Truly, you are an inspiration for all of us. And um, it's very, I, I am personally very much excited, I'm sure all of us are, to meet you and um, know insights from your session. So over to you now, Ayush. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sanjana. So the first thing that I think about when I hear that introduction is, XLRI ke baad to kuch kiya hi nahi that, that, is, that is about where I peaked and there is nothing in my introduction to cover after that. But, no, no, I uh, definitely, definitely. I was more interested what you did in XLRI because I want to be like you, but definitely being a consultant in KPMG and, um, and all the conditions you've got, that's already there on LinkedIn. So we're all glad to meet you. Uh, so before everything else, thank you so much, Sanjana, for that introduction. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining at 9.30 on a Monday. And uh, I see Kanagra sir is also in the session. And before we get into anything else, because all of you are sort of getting into the program, I have to say that for the time that we were in XLRI, Kanagra sir was the hardest taskmaster, the best friend, the best mentor. And the one person you can count on to have your back through everything. So that is one thing that I wanted to say. And uh, now, so one thing that I wanted to start off is when we talk about management consulting. So one thing that happens, that trend that I've seen in GMP every year, and this is especially prevalent in two-year programs, everybody who comes in and who doesn't really have a path set out. Some people who want to go into HR know they want to go into HR. People who want to go into marketing know they want to go into marketing. Anybody who doesn't know what they want to do says, I'm a management consultant. Now, that's great, but there are some myths, some facts about management consulting that I want to cover. This part, there are two parts that I want to cover today. One is if management consulting is something you want to pursue, think it through as to whether it is a fit for you or not. That is true for everything. Don't go into something because it's cool. Go into something because it's a fit for you. Because once you cross GMP and you go into any company and any Alan that you talk to will attest to this. Once you finish GMP and you go into any company, suddenly you're in the grown up world. You are being compensated accordingly and your responsibilities are accordingly. So first thing that I want to say is whatever role that you go into, make sure it is a fit for you. That is an important thing. If it is not a fit for you, that becomes a problem for you in the long run because there is no point to doing something that you're miserable in. The same thing applies to management consulting. Don't go into it because it's cool. Go into it because you think it's a fit for you. The second thing that I wanted to cover is how to crack management consulting. And the second part to this is sort of more generic to GMP tips that you would need to be able to crack companies. My legitimacy comes from the fact that I was in the COVID batch. I was in the 2020 to 21 batch, which was an absolute bloodbath everywhere for placements. There were hiring freezes, companies were not recruiting. And I have seen the struggle in that year. You guys won't face that, fingers crossed. But that is where sort of our credibility comes from because we had to fight for those roles. So you in a better market, 
won't have to fight for that you can fight for even better things you can fight to get the roles that you want so if you're in the interview room for the role that you want you should be able to crack that one interview so these are the things that i sort of want to cover today i don't want to take up too much of your time because it's a monday night and i sort of am familiar with the pain of sessions so i will share something uh, sanjana can you confirm if my screen is visible yes i should see it now you might think this is a very odd slide opening but this is the slide opening i've used in every single case competition so it's lucky for me you might think the colors are weird but i am color blind so you have to deal with it and the case competitions that i have participated in did not have a problem so again that that is where my credibility comes from now management consulting facts and myths by the way if anybody has any question at any point please unmute and ask or raise your hand and sanjana you can ask them because i sort of can't see but yeah feel free to do any of that and yes i have been using this format 3 years in a row so consulting facts and myths first of the first myth that everybody comes across i won't say it's a myth the first statement that everybody comes across consulting is fun and yeah it is it it is fun because in terms of having a learning curve consulting teaches you a lot so if you're doing five projects and you're doing them in five different industries for five different companies you are getting a very macro view of the world you are not just dealing with a particular problem you are dealing with how the company functions how the company makes money so one problem like so the way i define problems is ki because of this problem kisko neend nahi aa rahi raat ko if it's an it problem then the it team cannot sleep at night if it's a product problem the product manager manager cannot sleep at night usually if it's a management consulting problem it is a cxo level person who cannot sleep at night because of that problem so you get to learn that that is a lot of fun but it's a lot of work timelines are short you will have lots of meetings you will have to find time between meetings to do your work and most importantly if you are not a fit if you don't enjoy the brass tacks of it if you don't enjoy making excel sheets at midnight then you might not enjoy it and that is important so much like everything else if you are not a fit for hr you won't enjoy hr the people that love hr love it they want to pursue it for the next 30 40 years so it's the same thing with management consulting it's a fit if it's a fit then of course there is the statement that consultants get to travel they get perks and uh, i sort of think this is very interesting i mean it's a little bit of a brag but it's more interesting than anything else that 3 to 4 years ago when i wanted to do a career switch i joined somewhere as an intern when i had like 3 years of experience i joined somewhere as an intern now i have an intern so you can say that yeah you you're a consultant you you get to travel you get perks but that's not the reason to go because again you are stepping out from gmp you are going in at a good level you are in xlri you've done the hard part yahan aa gaye ho placement ho jayegi but all companies will give you some perks or the other they'll have some work culture or the other don't just go because of the perks companies will offer you perks consulting will just make sure that if they are offering you perks you are worth every penny now the third statement is that consulting is a great way to learn about how businesses are run and it is you can understand your client's business need and help resolve it so for example a client can come to you wanting to enter a new market a client can come to you saying we have a profitability issue help us resolve it clients will come to you with business needs and 
you do get to learn a, a lot about how businesses are run but again as with everything your learning depends on the effort you put in the same logic applies to xlri as well gmp gets over really quickly if you get placed in the starting part you might think your program is over because you'll be like placement to ho gayi i have no more learning to do and now i can spend the next 7 8 months to chill which is a great way to do it but your learning will depend on the effort you put in now the last thing is for the people who have decided that we want to go into management consulting is the statement that all i have to do for consulting interviews is to learn how to solve cases now i remember when we were coming into excel in 2020 and the pandemic had just started so we were the first ba- we didn't get to meet our seniors because obviously it was on lockdown and the whole concept of like making whatsapp groups to interact with each with each other in an mba program we were we were sort of the first batch to have to do that and we were asking our alums questions on the bridge group and somebody asked i want to go into consulting what resource should i use and they said read case in point and the person said okay i'll read case in point what do i do after that and they said then read case in point again and when you're done with it the second time read it the third time so there are a lot of consulting resources lots of b schools in india and around the world have their consulting case books have their compendiums of cases but there is a reason that case in point is used all over the world and that reason is that it is the only one that sort of gives you the conversation between the interviewer and the interviewee which is as important as the mathematics of it as the structure of it now the caveat to this is that there are lots of elements to a case interview that affect your ability to crack consulting it is not just how you do the case if you are not a fun engaging person they can't put you in front of the client i have seen really smart people re- like people who are way more qualified than i am not be able to crack the consulting interview because whoever was interviewing them was apprehensive about can i put this person in front of a client if this person is so nervous this person is going to make the client nervous so there is a lot more than just being able to crack the case now let's talk about the case interview a little bit so i have mentioned three cases here and again you have to go along with the template because this is what i have used in all of my case compilations so there are three cases the first case is the one that i was asked in my case interview and i can go through these cases and we can move on to the next thing if anybody wants to interject and sort of try it out please go ahead i'd be more than happy the first case is the one that i was asked it is a market entry case a food aggregator similar to zomato swiggy wants to enter the india market how should they do it uh, ayush uh, yeah yeah this is sampat so i have one question so yes. regarding the previous slide you told that uh, case in point uh, yeah case in point so that uh, that thing can you please explain once again actually i i didn't understand that one okay case in point is the name of a book okay uh it is so there are many case books out there case in point is the case book that is generally the introduction to case studies that is used in b schools across the country across the world so i highly recommend that you either buy the book torrent it whatever you want to do but read it read it read, like give yourself a week don't try to solve the cases just read it end to end like a story book okay thank you okay yeah sure yeah thank that you that was my bad i should have explained that so yeah three cases the second case is a case that a friend of mine got while they were trying a lateral switch my friend got this case and he had to make a powerpoint presentation to sort of solve this case the context is that even after you've gotten placed here when you're looking for lateral positions 
they will ask you case interviews even if it's not management consulting they will ask you case interviews they might give you a case and ask you to make a presentation all of that does happen so this is the best time to learn it then the third case is cost optimization again this is a case that a friend of mine got in a lateral interview a company manufacturing cheap tablets is facing spiraling costs and must figure out why now imagine yourself for 30 seconds i don't know how if your placements this year are going to be on campus or if they're going to be virtual companies have gotten used to the idea of virtual interviews because it saves them a lot of time and money so i think that might be the way that we go ahead in future so consider yourself in a virtual interview room you are sitting on a zoom call and the interviewer says the way the interviewer said it to me tumhe case karne bahut acche lagte hain chalo tumse ek case puchte hain and then they ask you any of these three cases and you are in, in, in an interview and they say okay a food aggregator similar to zomato swiggy wants to enter the india market how should they do it now does anybody want to take a shot i'm not going to act, like i we don't need to actually sit and solve the case i just want to know what would go in your mind what would you be thinking about yeah i just have a like to amit you hi amit okay so yeah. i'll just take a minute to you know jot down my thoughts and all go for it anybody else unmute and yeah. start talking i really yeah. would like to take a, take this up give a shot i can give oh fine yeah sanjana go ahead. i think varad raised his hand would you like to give a shot varad uh sure uh so uh, starting i would say that uh, they would want to understand the eating habits uh of the demographics that actually targeting the age group they are targeting and then drill down to uh, what percentage of food actually is being ordered versus uh, how much locally is available at the vendors okay uh, let me answer those questions mm -hmm. demographic we don't know you tell us we want to enter the market mm -hmm. to make money how we do it is your problem we don't know the demographic we don't know the eating habits all of that is on you who else hath mat raise karo bolna shuru karo yeah can i start yeah okay so first of all i will examine the current market condition like what is the size of the food market like you know, online delivery market what is the growth rate what are the customer seg segmentation of it who are the major players market share strength and weakness so basically just a uh, overview you know of the current market scenario or the current situation of the market and how my product is it? how would you do it you are sitting sitting in an interview room with the interviewer mm -hmm. <coughs> i know the steps i want you to do it and what i want you to do is you've seen zomato you've seen swiggy you know the india market at this point right mm -hmm. you tell me what you think a viable strategy would be and why and ask me questions according to how you would proceed who else can they try finding a niche uh, that uh, zomato and swiggy doesn't enjoy otherwise for example they are already big players they'll have large chunk of market so they cannot uh, directly target it uh, in that segment but they can find a niche and uh, do something about there give me an example and tell me why that would work initially uber it's uh, came in it survived for a while uh, when zomato and swiggy already had penetrated quite into the market so mm -hmm. they did a low cost thing where zomato and swiggy had certainly higher cost for the similar product they uh, uh, offered so for a year they did cash crunch and they did have a good segment but eventually it faded out so they had a niche market but they couldn't catch up to the uh, market junk that zomato and swiggy enjoyed right no you told me how one company tried it and failed now tell me how you would do it and succeed i would fail on capital i don't have that much capital <laughs> so uh, i'm still trying to figure out how how it will actually help 
but yes i would uh, still want to target with that uh, i need to find uh, that niche area yeah. since this is a food business it's a tricky business i'm i'm not sure whether um, many companies are able to uh, kill it there for for every swiggy and zomato there is an uber eats that tried and failed mm -hmm. but for every zomato there is a swiggy which means it is not a one company market so i was uh, can you use uh, jubilant food works food works because uh, jubilant food works that uh, gave the platform to sell the food to the okay. uh, people of yeah so the interesting thing is jubilant food works calls itself a tech company that sells food jubilant food works the parent company of dominos dunkin donuts yes they call themselves they always say that we are a tech company that happens to sell food the problem with, with that is that the difference is zomato and swiggy are aggregators zomato and swiggy don't make their own food yeah yeah and food works makes makes its own food but so i heard that uh, jubilant food works they also provide the platform for other companies to like use uh, uh, used to sell but it may not be the product of the other company as well means if they don't produce the food also they can use their platform right but do you think jubilant food works makes enough money as an aggregator that it can survive in the market without selling food on its own that need to check <laughs> not sure <laughs> if, if they were the first thing that they would do is sell all of their food business hello yeah, yeah. hi ayush can i uh... Uh, try yeah go for it yeah so first thing what i'll do is uh, uh, whichever company wants to really try into this uh, business or they want to enter into this market i would really try to see with vrio analysis whether they have a competitive advantage with this particular segment or not uh, should they do not have this particular advantage uh, the next part comes as a uh, coming into market with a mnd okay how would you know so we don't want to do an mna we want to directly enter the market that is a good that is a good approach i am giving you that answer we want to directly enter the market so in that case first thing to so know I... is uh, 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 first thing is as i said find out whether they have a competitive advantage or not with vrio analysis how, how would you find out so first thing is uh, uh, i mean analysis is known so i'm not going into uh, doing the analysis no in terms of in terms of the analysis also, broadly, in terms of sorry in broadly in terms of the analysis what factors would you look at because yeah, so the i am a new company mm -hmm. this is the first time i'm doing this i have a lot of money hmm first bolta hai i want to i want to enter the indian market in the food aggregator space mm -hmm. so ask do you have any experience and he says no i have no experience in it i will give you all the money that you need mm -hmm. you just have to give me a return okay H hello yeah okay so, so hello uh, with the information what you provided uh, Somebody... can everyone please unmute themselves if they are not talking thanks yeah so with the information you provided i would uh, uh, i would see whether uh, i mean with this thing i only think is there is a m and a approach but as you are saying that that approach is not lucrative yeah. right now then right. i am right now clueless because if you have so much of money and you do not have any competitive advantage in that case m and a seems to me as a right approach okay um, hi ayush can i try that one okay yeah go for it try um so basically what we can do that if we have so much of funds in hand we can bifurcate the funds maybe into two parts and um, apply one of the funds for uh, marketing the cloud kitchens the small kitchens where uh, the vendors are local vendors and the margins are big for swiggy and zomato whereas uh, people can get fresh food and basically for students and people who don't want to cook 
uh, or maybe people like ourselves and then half of the other half of the chunk of the money can be applied to uh, good hotels or restaurants where people want to eat but they might not want to go to so a bifurcation of funds where there is a higher risk and a higher reward probability and maybe half of it somewhere where there is a maybe a lesser margin there but a safe reward which can come out of it okay that's a that's a very good approach my question to you is what is your moat now for anybody who doesn't know a moat moat is a com- your competitive advantage the etymology of the word moat is we used to have castles and those castles used to be surrounded by a body of water and they would put alligators and sharks and crazy stuff into it that was called a moat so how do you protect your castle if you made this approach if you're approaching cloud kitchens and if you're approaching supposing high end restaurants or high end hotels how can why do you think you as an unknown player will be able to do that whereas zomato can't just come and undercut you when i say you have money i mean you have money to run and scale the business i'm not saying you have blind money that you can invest you have roughly right. the same amount of money as everybody else mm-hmm. so my question is with that money how are you creating a competitive advantage uh, ayush can i try nishit over yeah. here so uh, one of the biggest complaints with uh, zomato and swiggy was that they were giving a lot of discounts and then in return they were charging the restaurants a lot higher because of mm. which the restaurants were not happy with them so what right. we can do is we can not uh, give that much of amount of discount and charge the restaurants very less and attract them to join uh, the platform which we are building okay and once that is- If they are... um at the same time i'd like to add to the point that i've given uh we can always uh, enter in contracts if that is uh, somewhere we can have a competitive advantage where it could be a yearly contract or a two yearly contract where these small cloud kitchens would get uh, a platform a platform from <laughs> where of they can why would they okay so i'll i'll answer those questions in order okay uh what what was the first thing you said nishit uh what i said was that uh, the uh, major complaint with zomato and swiggy was they were giving a lot right. of discounts and then uh, they were charging the restaurants a lot higher with for commission right. now uh, so i'll answer nishit then i'll answer urvashi also nishit the one thing that you will learn never as a small player never go into a price war with a big player because the big player can temporarily undercut you on price drive you out of business and then hike their price you go into a price war your margins are going to get razor thin your visit you're going to be very hard to scale your business because you don't have margin and eventually they can survive on lower margin briefly for 6 months after 6 months you're out of business and they've driven a competitor out and they can raise their prices again urvashi the small problem with what you said is for a cloud kitchen it is a massive risk to sign a contract with you as an unknown player right yeah because if they're signing a contract with you you want exclusivity with them otherwise your contract is meaningless yeah if you're signing an exclusive contract with them why would they sign a contract with you for exclusivity platform for a platform that they are anyone anyway on getting if they are trying to... the risk is higher with you right compared to as a matter of swiggy they sign an exclusivity with you you sell nothing for 6 months they can't sell on zomato and swiggy by the time you start making money they are out of business yeah that's an interesting point right i should i should i would like to question like uh, first of all we need to ask the company like what what type of investment they are uh, ready to make and what amount of uh, return they want so that i can understand which market i can target so if they are into very uh, they want a very high margin then i need to uh, go for the niche markets and if they want uh, the uh, like they want to get a big market share then i would generally capture the product which are in high in volume so as i have already done this uh, analysis of the market being a consultant uh, so i would have the data and i can then pitch what they want this is what i would like to do so the one thing that you did that is good is clarifying the exact goal 
because obviously until you know what the goal is it's a little vague when i asked this question they said you decide we want to enter the the market we want to make money you give us better returns than, than what the market is giving us we are happy so <coughs> what i want what my goal with this case is to come up with a company that is still making money 6 months 1 year down the line and zomato and swiggy haven't driven us out of the market the way they did with food panda uber eats meals on wheels for every one company that has succeeded there are 10 that have failed so then okay. uh, then then we can go for uh, something like uh, we can go for an aggregator of the some of the products which are more in demand for example we can go for the uh, biryani example like in delhi there is a big market of biryani so what i would do is like i would make it a biryani aggregator rather than the food aggregator so that will give me a competitive advantage on uh, the particular segment and i would sustain for 6 months i guess so okay what would you do with biryani that zomato can't do so i am providing exclusive uh, exclusivity for the biryani and uh, exclusive discounts so uh, which zomato now cannot provide because they have a lot of food and they have to have a lot of money uh, discount associated with it while i can do it for exclusivity nahi tum mujhe ye batao i i am not opposed to the idea this is very similar to the solution that i gave what i am trying to get you to is first off when you are doing biryani what can you offer that a zomato cannot offer and your answer can't just be discounts because eventually you will run out of discounts to offer if the restaurant is making the biryani for 200 rupees and zomato is giving it to the customer for 300 rupees and you are giving it for 250 rupees your margin is still lower zomato can invest that 100 rupees back into the business you can only invest 50 you will grow slower so what is your competitive advantage other than the discounts i would like to think for a minute please go for it probably the delivery time sorry i uh, uh, so deliver uh, deliver what i what uh, maybe the uh, delivery time of or the like the, of the product of the food right, right. so that, so that is so very similar to the solution i offered what i said uh, is yeah yeah this is pratve um okay. i have a different approach to this so i think that um, see coming into a competition um, is coming into the market where we already have two leaders like a zomato and a swiggy so we need to do a, something different which will bring in more customers right? right so for that i would like to go into a different approach which will be like suppose uh, we have a similar model with swiggy and uh, zomato but at the same time we get in some group of uh, suppose a uh, woman uh, who actually make good food but they don't know how to go into the business. Okay. I can't hear you. Can I? Can somebody else hear him? Yes, me too. Up. Uh, I think. He... Can you hear me now? Hello. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Cool. I. I will just. Uh, uh, okay. I'll speak from this point. Yeah. So suppose we have a community of the people uh, of women who actually uh, cook well. so we can get them on board it get them a food license help them out as a company will help them out and then they can all we can on board them and promote them so that people will buy from them so there's an emotional point to this uh, whole uh, story at the same time we'll also earn money and i think this can be help of some help that's the legit paper model yes very similar that is the legit paper users yes so that's a very interesting approach does anybody want to speak jisne abhi tak nahi bola somebody who hasn't spoken yet uh, hi ayush yeah uh, so i would like to add on to the uh, approach that prate just uh, narrated like our target audience can be changed to uh, especially those areas where uh, zomato and swiggy are not working like the interior areas the villages right. and we can right. liaison with the local hotels along with that we can uh, also uh, yes use the local population Uh, use the uh, talents of cooking well 
and then uh, promote them with uh, through the company that wants to enter into the market right so th uh, that's a very good add on the solution that i offered in this case was very similar so at that point i was living in lucknow i'd been in lucknow for about 8 months and what i said was okay does anybody know what the network effect is बजर नहीं दबाना ऐसी बोल रहा बोलो ओके द मोर पीपल यूज इट इट गेट्स मोर फेमस एंड इट 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 बिकम्स देन डोमिनो इफेक्ट काइंड ऑफ थिंग सो अदर व्हाट हैपेंस इज द मोर पीपल यूज इट द एनवायरमेंट गेट्स क्रिएटेड अराउंड इट सो एज एप्पल स्टार्टेड द टच स्क्रीन फोन so environment got started centering around it okay so it's kind of a network effect which got created so people started making cases for iphone because it become famous people started making other accessories for it so a, a new eco uh, eco uh, environment gets created around it so i agree with the first part of your answer hmm. the network effect is a situation where as more people use your product your cost of customer acquisition goes down hmm. the biggest example of this is facebook when face when facebook started off facebook had to spend money on acquiring customers then we started joining facebook because other people that they knew were on facebook the point of this story is any aggregator has a weak network effect if zomato is in delhi it is easier for zomato to capture the rest of the delhi market however if zomato then wants to go into faridabad it has to start from zero so my answer was that i am in lucknow the part of lucknow that i live in zomato offers everything except for the food that everybody recommended that i eat when i go to lucknow so if they are saying you go to this place for the tunde kebabs or you go to this place for the galotti those places are not delivering so i was like the first thing that you do is you go to the cities where the matter is not there the second thing that you do is which was also a very good point and i the reason i asked you that question on biryani was because i gave the same answer i was like if i order biryani right now it's going to take an hour and a half so i would become the tier 2 city delivery person for biryani i would become the tier 2 delivery person for pasta but i would capture the market that is not worth like that is not worth it for the matter and then i would become the king there yeah i think this uh, logic applies to was it ola i think so one of these companies it started off in hyderabad i think and it stayed in hyderabad for a very long time it kept raising funding and kept building its network in hyderabad and then once it had raised enough funds then it expanded into other cities but it kept capturing the hyderabad market i'm not sure which company it was facebook did the same thing they kept it small they kept going college campus to college campus to college campus built that moat where people couldn't mess with it and then it could expand so the point uh, yes jin logon ne hath raise kiya hai you can go ahead and speak uh, there is another app called eat sure it has done something similar so uh, any uh, any eatery that is listed on that place uh yeah. lies within the area that uh, zomato and swiggy serves but those are not listed on those uh zomato right. and swiggy and they offer freebies exactly. with every uh, item that they have listed and they're forcing user to actually spend more by uh, giving lucrative freebies which right. they indirectly That's end up paying so the freebies go go into your cost of customer acquisition exactly and but those that, they're offering something that people are actually wanting to have like chocolate correct, correct. Devashish has raised his hand. Yash Pandari has raised his hand. Go for it. Hello. Yeah. Uh, sir, actually, I want to say the same point. Actually, uh, rather than going only into the tier two and tier three city, why not maximize our customer acquisition? Actually, first of uh, on first basis, rather uh, uh, what Varad said. Actually, to adding to that point, uh, you can uh, uh, not only give discount. actually to start with combo deals and all that sort because uh, uh, i think three days back we were with chai basa and uh, zomato was also delivering at that point 
so i don't think zomato has left uh, so much of points to invest uh, a company to so that a company could invest uh, on that place only see a zomato is trying to gain ground in every market now so when i was in lucknow if i wanted ban makhan chai i could order, order it on zomato however those were still from places that were equipped to handle a zomato if i go to the shops that can't handle zomato if delhi ke jo log hain if you go to rajender ka dhaba rajender cannot handle zomato go to those places that are too small for zomato this is an example this i'm not saying this is the only solution the beauty of these cases is there is no one solution because if there was one solution we could all make that company and run it so yes you want to maximize the number of customers you have for the minimum amount of resources that you put in the point that i'm making the problem with discounts is discounts are temporary discounts will run out once you are out of discounts what is your competitive advantage so actually discounts is still that point when you maximize customer acquisition then after you can lure into more restaurants and all the points so that you can gain uh, something out of it ha huh, but the, here's the thing if i'm using your app if i have zomato ka app and i have swiggy app and i download your app beyond a point once your discounts run out and i get disappointed in the fact that i used to get this on this app for 80 rupees now it's 100 rupees i will definitely not use that app if unless you have another competitive advantage if i am going back to your app because i'm like this food i can't get anywhere else that is a competitive advantage if my competitive advantage is only that i'm offering discounts that becomes a problem so actually competitive advantage as i said actually uh not only discounts actually with deals like if you try a new restaurant will give uh, this much of off and all that uh for one time only like this deals and this uh, deals can be mentioned while maximizing the customer acquisition right the only thing as long as it's not hitting your bottom line as long as your margins don't start killing you you can keep doing that if you can if you can sustainably offer a better price price by all means that's that's the that's the whole game i wish i would like to suggest one more idea sure? like uh, what we can do is like we can uh, tie up with these with some of the companies which are having good products but are not having good visibility for example a beverage com- company is there so if i am offering a biryani and i would uh, like uh, provide their beverage for free so they would get their marketing done and while i would uh, give it for free and uh, get my customer so th- this can be one of the tricks and uh, talking about the things which we discussed right now like uh, Uh, going for the areas where uh, where zomato is not there and all so for this case is similar to airline industry like you, everyone wants to operate uh, for delhi mumbai but nobody right. wants to operate for uh, let's say uh, delhi to like for small places so where the big market is there the the big fishes are already capturing most of the uh, uh, most of the market so you won't be able to compete directly with them and uh, to sustain the market you need to uh, capture the other part Correct. so <laughs> this can be done uh, is what i think yeah the only thing with the beverage example is people have to like that beverage enough that it becomes your competitive advantage if people don't like yes, that yes, beverage yes. absolutely then it is a problem absolutely then it becomes a competitive disadvantage because you will have to factor in that cost so i would uh, give the disadvantage yes 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 agreed agreed that's a that's a risk but yeah that, that is a so, experiment like that is an experiment yeah. you can go with the the big brands also correct i i uh yes sir yes. i have an alternate point of view to offer so uh for based on my experience with zomato and swiggy uh their their point one one area of improvement is quality of food order many many times we have to return or refund so i think we can offer offer uh, something better uh, in that area through our offering in the sense that uh, uh the delivery person can over, uh, can reach the restaurant before the food is being prepared oversee the oversee the quality of the food and uh, deliver only if it is uh, satisfactory so that would improve the quality experience of the users so why do you think matter doesn't work 
sorry why do you think zomato doesn't do that mm. question open to all because um, because uh, they because one customer is uh, already making up uh, with the products that are uh, rightfully delivered to the right uh, customers the loss is way too less compared to the profits it's already making and the customer it will lose is sufficiently marginal compared to what it is gaining otherwise actually it's um, uh, more of a legal issue because zomato uh, on paper it says that it's a mediator and it doesn't promote any restaurant or anything else so that's why uh, uh, uh recommending something or being uh, more towards uh, one restaurant as compared to other that would create legal problems for them because that would create preferences um okay. the other thing is uh, if you are going to actually have to get the delivery guy there and uh, have him oversee the food that might actually create a bottleneck and you might actually increase the delivery time which is a big one bingo tumhara delivery ka boy where that your delivery person is delivering 10 now your delivery person can deliver 6 uh, for for that we can uh, we can use, make arrangements so that the delivery persons can reach a place quickly uh, maybe we can do something for that i was thinking in that way that to they're all they're all trying to make their uh, delivery person reach quicker that is the whole fight how many deliveries can you get from a delivery person matlab when you see a delivery person and they are already out of breath that is because but there's already litigation going on the same right that uh, they're already crunching time to reach uh, faster than anyone else exactly uh, the current 30 30 minutes and under uh, delivery they it already has a litigation against it for the similar purpose so that cannot be a solution area here so the legal point is also very very valid but the other thing is if you are artificially blocking the number of deliveries your delivery person is doing you are going to lose out iska there is a concept that you will cover which is called lean manufacturing supply chain people anybody familiar with lean manufacturing yes sir yes sir yes yes sir yes don't say sir please i graduated two batches sorry, ago sorry. yeah yes i was... uh, lean manufacturing the concept is you minimize the amount of inventory that you have because you are not making any money on the inventory every part of your supply chain moves according to the throughput rate you minimize the amount of stuff that you have that is not making money for you so when your delivery boy is standing there for 30 minutes while the food is being made your delivery boy is inventory you are not making any money off of that person you want that person to reach right when the food is made you want that person to pick up the food from the door and run yes that's true that is how you want to minimize it this is called just in time manufacturing you will learn this so the point that i wanted to make was that when you're doing these cases a it's a lot of fun i did not expect this kind of response i thought we'd be done in 5 minutes that's why i had three cases as backup so a it's a lot of fun b i used an industry that everybody is familiar with occasionally you will get an industry that you are not familiar with but the logic of business stays the same you want to make money so i just wanted to introduce you to cases because you are just stepping in this is what they look like some of them will have a lot of data some of them will not all of them will require you to use your brain and all of them will require a degree of structure so these are three cases that i have these are not cases that i have picked up out of a book these are all cases that either i have faced in an interview or people that i know have faced these are questions that companies in india are asking of gmp students so for you these become real life situations so that's what i'm saying get used to them and when you go into an interview you can't say cases to maine padhe nahi sir aap question hi pooch lo i don't know just ask me something behavioral can't do that so now that we've sort of gone into this in a little bit of extensive detail in terms of technique first thing keep calm don't just come out with a hypothesis think your hypothesis through 
think about how that is going to have an actual impact when you are given a case you become the ceo you have to manage your people you have to manage your money you have to manage litigation like like that was a very valid point that if my delivery person is standing there and somebody gets food poisoning they'll say your delivery person was supposed to stand there how did he not know these are all things you have to think about it is your company as soon as you are given the case it is your company to manage if you are the consultant it is your company because if you are the consultant the money that you get is at some point going to be related to the work that you do so start off by keeping calm start with a hypothesis and stay messy with it now there are a couple of concepts i have cover, uh, that i have used here one is messy which means mutually exclusive collectively exhaustive i am going to put this in the chat i want to introduce you to the concept i don't necessarily need to cover it here in a lot of detail mutually exclusive collectively exhaustive is a concept that means if i am creating segments of anything my segments should not have an overlap they should be mutually exclusive and taken together they should be collectively exhaustive together they should cover every possibility so if i am supposing segmenting by age i will take 0 to 15 i cannot take 17 to 30 if i am taking 0 to 15 i have to take 15 to whatever 30 25 they have to be mutually exclusive if there is an overlap your numbers will get messed up so when you are making segments you start with a hypothesis you create buckets of what your options are stay mutually exclusive collectively exhaustive this is a very interesting concept look it up keep drilling down till you find the biggest factor there is a concept called the pareto principle the pareto principle says that The, so the way this concept started was somebody noticed that 20% of the people had 80% of all the resources 20% of the people had 80% of the money had 80% of the cows then they realized this logic applies to everything if you look at a cricket team 20% of the batsmen will have scored 80% of the runs you look at the india 2010 team you had tendulkar ganguly dravid they had scored 80% of the runs and you had ajay atra words for nothing so this is true for everything 20% of 20% of your resources will have control over the rest of the 80% that is just how it works that is just how life works but this is a very useful concept in consulting when you're solving a case you focus on that 80% chunk if you're trying to sell something in india and you want everybody to buy it the first audience and if you can segment it that way the first audience to go for is agricultural because 66% of the country is agricultural go after the largest chunk you can find your niche in that niche go after the largest chunk that will solve your problem so in a case look at what is the bottleneck for 80% of what you're doing in the zomato swiggy case 80% of the bottleneck was creating a sustainable competitive advantage that your competitors couldn't jump into find that one bottleneck in the case that controls 80% of your problems keep drilling down till you find the biggest factor the reason when we are doing actual cases in consulting when we are actually working for a client the reason we love this concept is because when our manager says use the pareto principle we get really happy because that means we don't have to care about the 20% we can only focus on the 80% so these are two concepts that i wanted to introduce a little bit and you can go into de- detail just look them up now key tricks understand a little bit about the industry ask the interviewer if you don't know you can ask me like in this situation you could have asked me questions you could also ask the interviewer this case was a little unstructured so we just started off with what you think are recommendations in general you don't start with the recommendations till you understand the case a little bit think your thoughts through now the more important part is the behavioral part the behavioral part a smile look calm interviews get scary case interviews get really scary because you are thinking you are processing and you are sort of trying to find you are trying to do the math it gets scary if you look calm even if you get it sort of wrong 
if your interview thinks that you are calm under pressure it's good presence of mind keep your interviewer engaged sometimes cases have a little bit of math in them don't disappear into your notebook don't let the interviewer drift off every 30 seconds or so keep engaging with the interviewer if they see your thought process sometimes they help and this happens where if they see your thought process and you are like doing calculations and they like have you considered this because they also they want to select you they just want you to get to a solution in a particular way so if they think you're doing 80% correctly and then you're going off and on to a tangent they'll help so this is the slide that i wanted to spend most of my time on but the zomato swiggy thing was really fun so we spent 30 minutes on that now in terms of how to prepare there are three aspects to this that i want to cover one is case practice read case in point then read it again practice your cases with a friend switch between interviewer and interview so part of the reason we formed the consult club in our year was because we were online and engaging with each other was a lot harder because we were getting to know each other for the first time we wanted to practice cases so what we started off with was the club would come up with two cases divide the class into two groups and we'd allot one case to each group so for example if me and a friend are paired maybe i'll have the case and i'll make the other person do the case then the other person will have the case and that person will make me do the case so just pick up any case book pick up pairs of two people three people four people one person can be the interviewer the other people can be the interviewees do it one on one if you have confidence but you can't the, the way you can't learn to swim through a book the way you can't learn to drive a car through a book you have to practice because when you're actually practicing is when it gets scary and that's where you learn third thing talk to your professors you will have lots of strategy marketing operations subjects there's finance i was always scared of finance so i'm not going to go into that but uh, accounting also i never understood but actually engage the, with the faculty discuss situations with them discuss cases with them i've had friends who discussed proper cases that they've gotten sometimes they'll get a case four days before an interview and obviously the professor can't solve your case for you if it's for an interview but it's a useful thing to get their opinion on it for the actual interview know your trajectory well this is on your cv you can't crack a consulting interview unless you get into the interview room if your cv gets rejected that defeats the purpose know your trajectory well own your trajectory if any of you go to my linkedin you'll see that my pre mba trajectory is a little shaky it's a little random it's quite random but then i worked really hard in the mba i got extremely lucky i got the support of a lot of people but know your trajectory well know what that equips you for and sometimes that takes a little bit of time because if you had like two three career switches they might not necessarily be in the same thing find the commonality make your cv make it again and again and again and again show it to 50 people every time somebody gives you an opinion see if that opinion makes sense every time somebody tells you your cv is great ignore it go to the people who tell you that it's an awful cv when i was applying i had made my cv and i showed it to my friends and they were like this looks great and uh, then i spoke to this uh, senior this alum and i sent my cv and i had a lot of confidence because i was showing it to alums now and i was like yahan se to kuch fayda niklega and my alum saw my cv and they were like tum clerk the yahan pe i was like okay that's not what i was going for like tumhare resume se to clerk lag raha hai i was like okay so yeah go for the people who give you criticism go for the people who tell you it's it's an awful cv now the third part that i want to cover is industry knowledge so one thing that i used to do and i couldn't sort of maintain it but it was useful to me fin shorts is a newsletter that comes out give or take every day everybody it's one of those things it's like an acoustic guitar you have it but you never use it 
So you keep getting the FinShorts newsletter and you stop reading it eventually. What I used to do is I kept 30 minutes in my day. I kept a notebook. And if there was a FinShorts article that was covering the airline industry, I would write down things. Then it's like, if two months later they had another article in the airline industry, I would add it to the same page. Over time, I developed industry insights because I was very apprehensive about my industry insight. I was like, I don't know anything about any industry. So I developed a FinShorts notebook. If they were covering telecommunications and they were covering telecommunications 15 days later, I, I could make the linkage because I had the notebook. Unbridled curiosity. You are in an MBA program for a year. Be curious. Keep asking questions. Ask people. Interact with each other. All of you come with work experience from diverse industries. Oh, and the third one. This one, I have sort of. So I watched the Indian Shark Tank. I had my KPMG interview. I took two days off from work to prepare for the interview. I ended up watching Shark Tank for two days. I didn't prep as much as I should have, but I learned a lot. And once I was done with the Indian Shark Tank, I watched all 13 seasons of the US Shark Tank. And it sounds like very frivolous advice, but watch it. It's on Woot. I torrented the first six seasons. Watch it. It's actually useful. Now, I've already taken you one minute over the time that I was supposed to. So my key takeaways, and this is generally for GMP overall, it's a great place to find your fit. Now the problem happens that over time you start getting nervous about placements and you're like fit with baad mein dekh lenge, but go into something where you're not going to be miserable in. This is not a function of the company. This is a function of the role and this is a function of you because the sort of role that you go into post your MBA decides your trajectory to an extent because after that, when you're starting to make lateral switches, companies think, okay, this person wants to do this. This person wants to do HR. That's why they're in HR. After that, making a switch is harder. So find your fit now. Specific to management consulting, it, it, it's considered cool, but that's not why we do it. it. It takes a lot of hard work. When I take, when I say it takes a lot of hard work, I've been wanting to cut my hair for two weeks. I haven't had time to go out and get a haircut. Consider that a warning, go into it. If it really appeals to you, if your heart calls out to it, do it. Don't go into it just because it seems like the cool in thing to do. Third thing, learn everywhere. I was an average, above average classroom student, but I was very cognizant of the fact that ours was an online MBA. Whatever learning I had to do, had to come from myself. Involve yourself in everything, take initiative, GMP offers a lot of more than two year programs. GMP offers you initiative to like do new things. Two year programs are a little bit rigid that way. Everything is a process. GMP gives you more flexibility because they have more faith in you because you're grown ups. So just learn things, Look, participate in case competitions. My advice for anybody who wants to go into management consulting is you participate in 10 case competitions, go through those deadlines, make 10 slide PPTs in two days. If you can do that 10 times and you still want to do it, then consider consulting. Participate in case competitions, part, go for committees. If you think your resume is weak, definitely participate in case competitions because that catches the attention. That's what I did. And make them part of your narrative for this year. I have sort of gone through the last parts relatively quickly because I also didn't want to take up more of your time. But if anybody has a question, please ask me. Shivang has raised their hand. Yeah. Uh, hi, Ayush. Uh, I just wanted to ask you one thing that uh, how much role does analytics play in the consulting field? And uh, do we need to be uh, aware about the analytical tools and how much do they play a role? See, analytics helps, particularly if you're going to uh, consulting firms that are more IT focused, it definitely helps. Even if you're not, if you can use analytics tools to make business sense, it helps. In management consulting, 80% of your work is happening on Excel sheets. I've never gone beyond Excel sheets because I don't know any better. But if you can make business sense, then analytics tools help. Everything that you can add to your CV helps. To an IT uh, consulting firm, it will definitely help. It will be a big boost.
Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, Ayush. Can I ask you one question? Go for it. Yeah. Uh, uh, just uh, as you said, uh, consulting is not everybody's cup of tea. So, uh, where did you exactly find your interest since you did not have a consulting background earlier? As you said, you had a very mix up of your profile. I started like solving. When, I, I started solving cases, and I was like, "Yes, this is what I want to do." And okay, so two years down the line, are you still finding it that much interesting? Like you can do it for next thirty years of your life. So thirty years, I don't know because eventually you get burnt out. But my days are hectic, and sometimes they'll start off early in the morning, they'll end late, late at night. But I love it. I wouldn't want to do anything else. It's, it's the same thing as everything else. Like if somebody is a marketer and you put them in marketing, they'll love it. The other thing that I did was I started participating in case competitions because I thought my CV was weak. Um, and then I participated in like 30 of them. Uh, I won like six or seven, but for every one that I won, there were five that I didn't, but I loved it. And then I was like, hey, maybe I enjoy making presentations. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Why do we have any other questions? Else we can wrap the session. I think in case we have, then I can connect with Ayush offline and get it done. But for now, I think we can wrap up the session. So Ayush, thank you so much for taking up all the questions so patiently and helping and motivating us to brainstorm a bit more, motivating us to solve case studies and read book like Case in Point and all. And uh, you explained the concept very well, like Pareto principle, mutually exhaustive and collective exhaustive and so on. Definitely we'll go back and deep dive into these concepts. So thank you so much for such a fantastic session. And uh, on behalf of the whole batch, I would like to convey a heartfelt gratitude. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm always there for whenever any of you need me because we GMP has that bonding. <laughs> any alums that you reach out to will always be happy to help because this this is our thing. Yes. And one more thanks for taking out time out of your hectic schedule. I know consulting work-life balance. So thanks for that too. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.